What was your creative process putting together the vision of Baby Driver? Well, in a way, it's like inspired by the music. I mean, it really started with like a song where I was listening to this one song, which opens the movie, and I just started imagining this like amazing car chase. Even back then, this is when I was in like living in North London when I was 21, I was listening a lot to this track. I'd sort of have this dream of this car chase. And then I had to think what the movie is to go with that sh car chase in my head. And I knew it wasn't a British film because London, as we both know, is not set up for car chases. Um, so I knew it was going to be an American film. And, and then sort of just the ideas developed over the years. You know, it should be, you know, like, oh, the getaway driver himself is playing the song. So maybe this is a character who needs the music to operate at like his highest potential. And I want to talk about where the movie's set. It's set in Atlanta. Atlanta is one of those cities that's vying for film production money, like lots of other places are mm. doing and deviating away from Hollywood as being the only place you can do that. What is your sense about that trend and how did that play into a specific decision to set the movie in Atlanta? And do you think that adds something else to a story when it's not set in the usual place, the usual haunts. The truth is, is that like, so Los Angeles sadly has become prohibitively expensive to shoot in for, for some movies, like a lot of other states around the country kind of like undercut Los Angeles with tax breaks. So that's why you get a lot of movies shot in like New Mexico, Michigan. But usually, and this is where I'm not such a fan of this, is like usually those movies are like faking being somewhere else. So it's kind of shooting in Atlanta, faking for like San Francisco. So Atlanta, you know, with some exceptions, you know, rarely plays itself on screen. So when it came up as an option to shoot it there, I said, I thought like, I don't want to like uh, shoot it there unless I can reset it there. And even just as a city on a sort of business level, it just like, Bank robberies do happen there. And I found like things online, both in, in the newspapers and also TV reports of things exactly like the things I'd written in the script. I was really invested in being there and then I used a lot of real Atlanta locations and like mentioned them by name. So I think people in Atlanta were very happy about that because like, you know, there's lots of businesses, um, like coffee shops, restaurants, like pizza places that are all like the real places in Atlanta that I can name check. And tell me, what is your sense at the moment in terms of the business of film? We know that cinema going audiences are not as big as they've always been. And we've got streaming platforms, we've got tech platforms, you know, we can put all of this content everywhere and anywhere. Do you think this is good for business? I'm a big believer in the big screen experience and watching a film with an audience. You know, if you watch a great film with a great audience, there's nothing better, you know? So I don't know whether like, sort of, I always think when people sort of call the death of cinema, um, I always think it's a bit premature because I think these things can and should coexist. It should be like a choice of platforms and not one thing like sort of taking the other one out. What do you think are some of the big takeaways and lessons that you have learned throughout your career that you would, you know, offer up to someone else? There's, I'd say that there's absolutely nothing stopping you making your first movie. I meet a lot of people who are sort of aspiring filmmakers and one thing that alarms me sometimes when people like sort of have a hundred reasons why not. And the truth of the matter is, is that you don't need to know anybody in the industry. You don't need to have any money yourself. Like you can make a movie. It's just like a sort of sheer sort of like force of will to do it. That's exactly what I did when I was like 20 years old. I made a movie, like a really and no budget movie. And I didn't have any in, uh, like uh, connections in the industry or even any real experience. It's just something that kind of like, it just sort of through sheer force of will, it happened. You can't take no for an answer and you cannot wait for somebody else to give you your break. You have to make your own opportunities and you have to create your break for yourself.